<laughs> uh, oh, my apologies. I didn't see you there. Let me just set down my MacBook and proceed to tell you about all of the best engineering laptops. Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here then make sure to hit that subscribe button and the little bell to get all of my notifications. So I, an intellectual, have gone through engineering and therefore I am completely qualified to tell you which laptop you should buy. No but seriously in this video I want to go through the top 10 best engineering laptops. However, before I get into it, a little disclaimer. I actually went through all of engineering with my MacBook. And the reason I did that was because I wanted a MacBook and most of the other students in my class also had a MacBook. No one really had any of these super powerful PCs that I'm about to tell you. And the reason being is because at our university we actually had a computer lab where we would do all of our assignments. So none of us actually had any CADing software such as SolidWorks or ANSYS or Mastercam. None of us had any of those programs on our computers. All of those programs that we used were on the workstations at the university. So if you want to work with SolidWorks at home or for some reason on the bus, then you will need a much more powerful computer. One example, in my undergrad, I actually had a huge, it was so huge. <laughs> I had a huge Excel spreadsheet and my MacBook was actually not able to open it. This is where one of these more powerful computers would have come in handy. But on the other hand, these computers are much cheaper than the MacBook that I had. <laughs> so why I got a MacBook? Because I'm an idiot and I was just following the trend. Please don't judge me, just watch the video. So before getting into the video, I wanted to mention the most important things you need to consider when you're buying an engineering laptop. So the first one is storage space. You need at least 500 gigabytes of storage space. My computer has almost a terabyte and I can tell you it's completely full. The reason why you need more than 500 gigabytes of storage space is that if you are going to be creating any of those CADing files, they take up a lot of room. So trust me, you're gonna need more than 500 gigabytes of space. Your hard drive should also be solid state because it has no moving parts and for this reason, it's a lot faster. The second thing you're gonna need to consider is RAM. Now RAM is needed if you have to do computations with a lot of data, such as these CADing programs or if you're gonna be running a lot of stuff at the same time. So if you wanna be surfing the web and rendering video and working in Excel and working in MATLAB all at the same time, then you need more RAM. So I would suggest at least eight gigabytes of RAM, but more like 16 gigs. Third thing you need is a fast CPU, at least Core i5. You're gonna need this if you wanna run any of those programs again, MATLAB, SOLIDWORKS, ANSYS, etc. Fourth thing you're gonna to need to consider is having a dedicated graphics card. If you want to do any 3D rendering that is done in ANSYS or SOLIDWORKS or whatever, then you're going to need a dedicated graphics card. And 2 gigabytes of DDR3 is enough for practically all of those applications. Fifth thing is Windows operating system. Now, most of these programs are only compatible with a Windows operating system, unfortunately. So even when I did need some of them, I would have to partition my hard drive disk because I had a Mac and it was a different operating system and I would still have to install Windows software on half of my disk. So I would really suggest that you get a Windows operating system. Sixth thing you need to <laughs> Sixth thing you need to consider is lightweight. Now, I know what you're thinking like, oh, this is the thing I care about the least, but trust me, if you're carrying this backpack every single day to every single class, you're going to the library, you're going to classes, you're going out for lunch, you're going to take your laptop with you. You don't want to be carrying around a super heavy laptop. You're going to get terrible posture. Your back's going to start hurting and you're going to end up not wanting to leave the library because you don't want to lug around your giant laptop. So that being said, here are my top 10 picks for engineering laptops of 2018. So the first one is the Acer Aspire VX. 15. It is really the best one for its price. It has a Nvidia graphics card with 4GB of dedicated RAM and it has 16GB of DDR4 RAM 
for the computer in general. It has an HD widescreen display. However, it does have 256 gigabytes of solid state drive, but there are upgrading kits to add more hard drive space. Next is the Acer Predator Helios 300, and this one is also a very good laptop for its price. Again, it has 256 gigabytes of solid state drive, which you can upgrade. And just like the Aspire, it has 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM space. Next, we have the HP NV17. Now, this computer is really good if you want to watch a lot of movies or a lot of Netflix or gaming or whatever because it has a full 2K Ultra HD touchscreen display. You can also get its solid state drive from a range of 120 gigabytes to one terabyte. And again, a Nvidia graphics card with four gigabytes of dedicated RAM. Number four is the Microsoft Surface Book. Now this laptop is really cool because you can detach the screen and use it just as a tablet. And it also has a pen that you can use with the screen. So you can take notes in class and you don't have to bring a notebook. It has 512 gigabytes of storage storage space and 16 gigabytes of RAM and it is only 3.6 pounds which for me is a huge plus because that means it's very very lightweight. Okay five is the Lenovo ThinkPad. Now this computer <laughs> every single professor at every university I've ever been to has this laptop. It is a machine. It is super big, it's super clunky, it's really not beautiful at all but it can do everything. It has an Intel quad core i7 CPU, HD display, one terabyte of solid state drive with 32 gigabytes of RAM. So ThinkPads have a reputation for being tough and serviceable. So it's good if you plan on having the same laptop for a long period of time since you can upgrade it with newer parts. What some people do is they actually get a super, super old one off of eBay for like $200 and then upgrade it or like pimp it out to their liking. Now, I just wanted to mention briefly why the Lenovo Y700 did not make it onto my list. Now, the reason why this newer Lenovo laptop didn't make it onto my list is because Lenovo has been caught twice putting malware onto its newer computers. I don't need dedicated ads by Lenovo on my computer. Thanks, but no thanks. <laughs> so if you want a Lenovo laptop, just get a ThinkPad. Then we've got the Asus computers. I'm not gonna say their full name because it's too long. Basically, the Asus has 2.7 gigahertz of Core i7 and a 128 gigabyte solid state drive with one terabyte of hard drive. It has a 2K HD touchscreen display that can bend around 180 degrees. So it makes it really easy for markup, drawing, and writing. So the Razer Blade Stealth 13.3, it has 512 gigabytes of solid state drive and 16 gigs of RAM. It's only 2.98 pounds, which again, for me is always a bonus. I don't like carrying around heavy laptops. And it has a touchscreen ultra high definition display. Next, we have the Dell Precision. Now this is also a super powerful computer. You can actually customize it to your liking. So that means it comes in three different CPU options the Core i5, i7, and Xeon. The drive you can get up to four terabytes. The RAM you can get up to 64 gigabytes. And you can get up to four Nvidia graphics cards installed. So this computer is definitely like one of the most powerful out there and I would suggest it if you're, I guess, like a gamer. I don't need a computer like this and I'm an engineer, so just consider that. Next is the Dell Inspirion. It is less powerful than the Precision, but still a very good computer. CPU is 3.5 gigahertz of Core i7. It has one terabyte of hard drive space plus 128 gigabytes of solid state drive and eight gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. It also has a Nvidia graphics card with six gigabytes of dedicated RAM. And finally, number 10 on our list. Yes, we made it to 10 laptops. So the last computer is the Dell XPS 15. So this CPU is a quad core i7. It has one terabyte of solid state drive and 32 gigabytes of RAM. It has an ultra, ultra high definition 5K display and a Nvidia graphics card with four gigabytes of dedicated RAM. Okay, everyone. That's everything I have for you today. I hope you liked this video. If you like it, then please give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments on the computers I've mentioned, or if you have any of the computers and you want to give a review, then please leave them in the comments below. I'm sure everyone would appreciate it. And subscribe if you haven't done so and if you want to see more videos. Thank you. <laughs> uh. Oh, my apologies. I didn't see you there. All of the best engineering... 
uh, in my in this and I'm gonna be late for work filming this right before work sitter the five most important things third thing you need is a third thing you need is a fast here are my top ten <laughs> so the first one is the Acer at VX set <laughs> it has one terabyte of hard drive space it has one terabyte of hard already went through two memory cards it also has a Nvidia graphics card with eight ugh. it also has a Nvidia graphics card with six get it 